Hold on, Steve. Hi, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey, nice good to afternoon, see you. everyone. Hey. So let um, me read. Yes. Okay. Let me read my preamble and we'll. Um, Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M C C A R T H Y S at AmherstMA.gov. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So with that done, um, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Gaston? Here. Kelly? Here. Doug? Here. Dylan? Here. And I'm here. Um, all right, welcome everybody. Um, and we have, I wanna talk about the agenda for a little bit. So we have our new um, annual off-premises, all alcohol liquor license applications, two of which would be new, and then two to take over the, the vacant license would be change of premises. That's correct, Steve? Yes. Yes, okay. And then we also have a special short-term under C liquor license application. Um, Mr. Riley, we were asking that if, if the short-term applicant is here, if the time notice time is locked in or if we can run through that short-term liquor license first. Um, yeah, you, you have, you know, if this, if you had some reason where it might be half an hour, you know, to do that, which I wouldn't guess, okay. uh, you might want to sort of open the other hearings and then adjourn. But, but if it's, I, I expect it'll be, you know, five or 10 minutes. So I, I think it's fine to take it out of order. To take it out of order. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but first what I'd like to do is we'll move to item two, which is public comment. And I'm asking if there's anyone here for public comment. And this is um, anything including uh, unrelated to the license hearings that we're doing under section three. So um, is anyone here for that kind of general public comment? If so, raise your hand. And again, it's not related to any of the license hearings that we're um, addressing in the agenda. Nope, okay, great. So let's do, if we can do the special short-term liquor license application, SST-23-16, uh, Lev Ben Ezra Survival Centers, Inc. Uh, April 1st, 2023 at 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., 138 Sunderland Road. Is that Mr. Guerin for this application? Yeah, speaking. Okay. Uh, could you introduce, could you give us a rundown of your application, please? Uh, sure. Uh, so I'm applying for a short-term liquor license on behalf of the Amherst Survival Center. Uh, we are hosting a large uh, recurrent annual fundraiser called Empty Bowls, which has um, prior to this year been held at the Inn on Boltwood. Uh, however, this year is being held at ASC property. Um, so in a effort to make the event and our fundraising more robust, robust we've decided to open a uh, cash bar to go along with this uh, lunch luncheon event. Uh, so hence the application. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, has everyone had a chance to look it over? And are there any questions from Mr. Guerin or comments about it? Or no, no discussion. No. Um, is there a motion to approve the license? No move. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? If there is none, we'll take a vote. Uh, guest, Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. Uh, the license has been approved. Thank you so much for coming in and best of luck with your event. Thank you, Ken. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Okay, so let's move back to our licenses for the um, off-premises all alcohol liquor license applications. So um, what I'd like to do, and just before I'm gonna back up a little bit and we did converse at another meeting with Mr. Riley about the process by which this liquor, liquor license decision would be made. And then we clarified it at our last meeting. But um, Mr. Riley, would you please uh, introduce the process for us and maybe give a little presentation of what we're going to be doing this evening? Uh, sure, sure, Thank happy you. to do that. So you, um, uh, as as I saw in the newspaper article, really, 
um, typically you only get, you know, one application at a time. If somebody has one and they decide they can't use it anymore, they will, you know, either, either sell it or, or find somebody that they would like to try to transfer it to. And so you only get the one application. Uh, just the way it happened here, you had an opportunity to kind of advertise it and see what kind of feedback you get. Uh, that is a valid, perfectly valid way to do it. Um, several of our clients have done that. I've I've had a hearing at the ABCC, and they've said this is a perfectly fine way to do it, as long as everybody gets an adequate hearing and the board makes a, you know, reasonable decision uh, of who to give it to. That uh, that there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so I, I, as you've got scheduled, uh, I think the most appropriate way to do it is to handle these four applications one at a time um you can you know get the presentation or or uh, you know discourse from the applicants the commissioners can ask questions of them um and you know as, as you you've done these hearings before and so you want to get a chance to get all the information that you feel you need and that they're offering and um i talked with steve a little while ago you know, one option would be to then close the public hearing on application one and move on to number two. Uh, I, I'd say that you could also, if you prefer, sort of decide you've heard enough from number one, open up number two without closing. And that way, just in case there's any follow up after you get through the last one, um, you'd still be able to ask questions, you know, go back and ask questions of the other one. It's, you know, that that's your call, really. Um, but at, at some point today, tonight, um, the uh, you know you you should have satisfied yourself that you've gotten all the information that you need to from these uh, applicants uh, and close the hearings. And at that point, uh, then it's to the commission just to deliberate amongst yourselves and see if you uh, you know talk about them, talk about what you what or, or where you would like to see this, uh, you know, license get exercised. And, uh, you know, you may uh, sort of feel you're moving towards consensus and somebody might want to make a motion. Um, I, I would add that uh, some boards, when they have a sort of more complicated than normal application process like this, you could also, you know, get through the hearings, close them and decide you want to you know, everyone wants to think about it and reread them and come back at your next meeting and, and do it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that either. I, I would recommend that you finish the public hearing part of it, uh, you know, getting everything you want from the applicants. So then the next time um, it's just you discussing amongst yourselves. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not pushing that as a, as a way to do it, but I, I think either way, making the decision tonight or uh, wanting to give it some more thought yourselves, uh, either one is fine. Um, but you know, at, at some point uh, when you're, you're talking, so you've got four applicants and let's just say everything's in order, they seem good, you know, it, it seems like they're all known around, uh, around town. Um, the, the board needs to, uh, the commission needs to decide, uh, you know, who to approve this license to. And so if, if someone eventually does make a motion to approve it to applicant X uh, and that, and that uh, is approved, um, as you, you may know, when the, when the commission approves an alcohol license, you don't need to have a list of reasons. You, you approved it based on you know, everything you heard. And then, but then uh, what you would need to do is go back and vote on each of the other three but the uh, the only reason that you need to deny those is obviously there's no longer a, a license available. Uh, typically, if you get an application and you deny it, I don't know how often this happens, but uh, you deny it because there's you know traffic concerns or whatever it might be. Um, you need to have a list of reasons that goes into the decision. And they can appeal that to the ABCC. But if there's no license available, that's that's the only reason that needs to be uh, you know in the motion. Um, the uh, I, I know I've talked about this with Steve, and I think you've uh, seen things uh, from me as well uh, that the when the ABCC does look at these decisions uh, on appeal, 
they typically will start off at least by saying, well, did the did the commission consider the so-called Ballerin factors, which is from about a 20 year old appeals court case. And the appeals court listed the kinds of things that a, a licensing authority uh, are appropriate to look at. Uh, and these include, um, you know, is there a public need for this license at this location? Is this an appropriate place uh, for a, a liquor license? Uh, I know at least with three out of the four, you've already either currently or, or have had a license there. Uh, so that perhaps is not a big one. Um, looking at the number of existing licensees in the area, uh, you know, if, if, um, if there's already a few off-premises licenses in the area, then, you know, perhaps someplace where there isn't, maybe that serves the public need better. That's something the commission can talk about. Um, you know, the size of the operation, is it, uh, is this going to be a big store, a small store? Is it just going to be an off-premises store and almost nothing else? Or is it a kind of a multi-purpose? I'm not sure what these other two applicants look like, but if they're a convenience store or a little market or something, that's obviously different from a, a store that's nothing but alcohol. Um, and, uh, well, similarly, the sort of operation that carries the license, that's a quote from the, uh, from the court, uh, same point, really, you know, what's, what's the nature of this business uh, going to be? And, you know, does the commission uh, support that? Uh, let's see. Um, Steve sent me things that, that came in this afternoon. I didn't really have a time to uh, digest them all. But, uh, but I believe he said that, that one applicant was sort of hoping that the commission would adopt a statement of reasons that they have submitted. Uh, as I just you know, talked about, uh, I don't really think that's necessary. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. As I say, I, at, at some point when you're done, you're going to have approved the license for one applicant and you don't need a list of reasons. And for the other ones, the only reason is gonna be there's no license to give them anymore you know there, there's none available uh that's so that's really all you need as far as reasons uh in my opinion um i think that's about it unless steve you think i'm forgetting something i was going to mention yeah brian i was wondering if you could just kind of go over the, the uh, content you know the way the form the discussions should take place i know there was some conversation in the board earlier uh maybe in response to one of your uh, far earlier emails that maybe they would just kind of I'll try to say one positive thing about each applicant. Uh, maybe you can just talk about, you know, the, what what the deliberation should consider, how in depth they could be, things like that. Okay. Um, well, I mean, you don't <laughs> you don't need to say a positive thing about each one, although you may you may want to. You may uh, listen to all four and think they're all uh, perfectly good applicants. Um, but yeah, as as I say, I I I think at least um, deliberations that I've seen or part you know, kind of been on the sidelines uh, for boards on this sort of thing is, uh, you know, again, you may, somebody may say, you know, well, I, I, I like the fact that this one is on this side of town. I think the other side of town is, you know, perfectly well served already. Um, and, you know, see what other people think and uh, just, if you, uh, you know, if you may, you know, you may sort of feel a consensus coming that maybe, um, maybe one applicant has a few more, you know, things, things in their favor um, than the others. And that may, you know, that may kind of steer you towards a vote. Um, I, I wouldn't say that you're required to, you know, have, well, we have four good things about this one and we only had two good things about those. So, uh, so on we go. Um, oh, I, I do recall one other thing, Steve, because you had asked me a, a few weeks back about what the uh, uh, city of Northampton was doing with this lottery. I had never heard of that before. Um, I suppose that there's nothing wrong with it. Um, although the only my the, my only reservation on that was uh, you know, the, the uh, ABCC, if they're presented with an appeal, would look to see, well, did the board have a good reason for approving, you know, this applicant over the other, or 
was it sort of an arbitrary decision? And obviously drawing a name out of a hat sort of strikes me initially as, as kind of arbitrary. So I think uh, I think a better approach would be to sort of hear everybody and then uh, and then, you know, deliberate amongst yourselves and, and see if uh, if maybe there's a, you know, kind of a, a sense uh, that one uh, one perhaps is more favored than the others. And then, uh, you know, at that point, might be ready for a motion. All right. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Reedy? I mean, for Mr. Riley. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Gaston, did you have one? You're 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 muted. Get Gaston, you're muted. Sorry. I sorry. I, I guess a question for us is whether we like the approach of having one big hearing that allows us to go back and ask a prior um, presenter questions. I, I guess I. I don't see the um, a downside with that approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that fine? Shall we just um, open the hearing, go on to the next one, leave the first one open until we have them all open so we can move back and forth instead of opening and closing them one after the other? Yeah. Is you could even, I think after the number four, you could even sort of have one motion to close all four public hearings. Uh, okay. There's anything wrong with doing that either. All right, that sound good to everybody? Okay, great. So that's what we'll do. We'll open the first one, and then when it's time to open the second one, we'll open the second one. Um, are there any other questions for Mr. Riley? Nope. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's start um, with, I will, is there a motion to open the hearing for the new annual off-premises all alcohol liquor license application from NP Amherst LLC doing business as NP Amherst 171 University Drive, Manager Parat Patel. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, let's take a vote. Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The hearing is now open. Um, okay, so we're looking for the people who are going to do the presentation on this this application. Uh, Tom then, Reedy here for the uh, applicant. Oh, Is there anybody else you'd like to bring on board, Tom? Yeah, Barry Patel, please. And Mr. Patel is here. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, thanks for having us. Thanks. So if you are the two of you going to introduce the application? And do Show time. Yeah, yeah. All I, right. I, I'd be more than happy to. And so Great. just for, for the record, it's uh, 181 University Drive. It's, I think you, you might've mentioned 171 University yeah, Drive. Yeah, it's 171 one on the agenda. It's 181, okay, thanks. It's 181. Um, and a uh, Scrivener's there with the agenda there. Okay. So for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson uh, out of Amherst here on behalf of NP Amherst LLC uh, and its application for uh, an off-premises all alcohol liquor license for the space, one of the spaces at 181 University Drive. With me this evening is a sole member and the proposed manager of the uh, liquor operator, uh, Barry Patel. Um, I think I'll talk first about the site. In case you're not familiar with it, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Barry and then I'll talk a little bit about the location, especially uh, compared to the other three applicants that you have in front of you. So, um, and one other uh, note, one of the things that we had provided was just a, a supporting narrative, kind of identifying what we would suggest are the reasons why we think this application is probably a, a better fit um, and maybe superior to those other applications. And we also included a map um, with, a, with a legend and some identifiers of the existing um, off-premises liquor licenses and then each of the proposed liquor license locations. And I'll get to that maybe towards the uh, end of the, the overall presentation. So <clears throat> first, the site, it's in, <clears throat> excuse me, the Big Y Plaza, 181 University Drive. Uh, the proposal is for 2,400 square feet within that plaza. Um, it is only going to be a, a liquor store. So unlike a couple of the other applicants, not a food market, not a convenience store, it is just a, a liquor store. 
Uh, the other uses in that plaza, as you're probably familiar, you've got Big Y, um, you've got uh, a restaurant. I think there's another restaurant, maybe a Papa John's coming. There's a nail salon. You've got CVS in the plaza, Dunkin' Donuts in the plaza. Um, the plaza has sufficient parking. Those are higher volume uses. There's sufficient parking, sufficient turnover of the parking spaces. Um, and there's a signalized intersec intersection to allow vehicles to enter and exit that plaza. And also it's uh, pretty proximate to Route 9. Um, we've entered into a lease or, you know, NP Amherst has entered into a lease with the landowner. It's up to 20 years um, and it provides for signage and parking and appropriate storage, et cetera. And it's for that 2,400 square feet. Um, Barry Patel, who's the proposed manager, Barry, 62 years old. He lives in Long Meadow. He's, he's operated liquor license. Uh, he's operated liquor stores before. He's had liquor licenses previously without violation, any of them previously in Springfield and also Bristol, Connecticut. And he's a part owner of a license of an off-premises uh, package store in Palmer that his wife actually runs. Um, he's of good character. We've already talked. He's going to have an ID scanner at the property. He He's uh, well aware of you know, Amherst, of the potential client base that he'll have there, especially with a location on University Drive. Uh, he understands that there may be college students coming in, potentially underage folks. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think his experience and certainly having the ID scanner is a is a is a great benefit. Um, and then really, I just want to talk about the location as it relates to some of the other applicants that you have. And so if you if you take a look at the map that was provided, I think it gives you a good visual of, you know, in red, you've got where the existing licenses are. Um, you have one really in South Amherst. Um, and that one, you know, R&P Liquors is kind of on an island unto its own. And then as you start to move north, there are some more concentrated in the center of town and then some concentrated in, in North Amherst. You look at North Amherst, you've got three already. You've got um, Big Guys, uh, Watrobas, and now Provisions. And so those are pretty close together. And I know Cushman Market is looking for one in that general area. When you get to the center of town, you've got Russell's Package Store. And I know that Amherst Market's looking for one somewhat proximate to, to that location. And then you go to the, the two towards the west on University Drive, where Six University Drive and this 181 University Drive are located. I think by the, the commission's previous findings, they found and thought that University Drive was an appropriate location to site the, the a liquor store because there was a need there. They obviously had previously granted one to Six University Drive. Um, however, that's the license that I, these four applicants are trying to get because for whatever reason, and it might be the types of complementary uses, you know, there's a bank there, there's professional offices there, lower volume uses, you know, UPS store. Um, it may be potentially that's the reason why that site failed. And so we would suggest that when you, you know, take everything into consideration, um, those Ballarin factors, including public need, and, and we think that, you know, there's already been a public need identified in, I'll call it West Amherst by the Hadley line, this site is going to be superior to, to Six University Drive and then also to the other two um, that have been proposed because of its offerings just as a liquor store, its finite uh, si size as 2,400 square feet and its location. Plus um, we've got an experienced operator seeking to operate uh, at this location. So that's overview. I think, you know, you've got the application packet. We believe it to be complete. We've provided to, Mr. McCarthy, the green cards and confirmation of uh, sending all of the um, notices out. And so we think you've got an approvable license in front of you. And, and we're happy to answer any questions that you have about Mr. Patel, uh, the site, its operations, et cetera. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Reedy. Uh, Steve, is all the paperwork in on this application? Yes, uh, just to piggyback off of that, um, I did receive, um, all applications are complete. I have received uh, notices of service, either aff affidavits of service or green cards from all applicants, and the police chief did sign off on all the applications. Okay, 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any current questions? Do we want to do this right now for, uh, for Mr. Reedy about this application? Or do you want to open the next one? I'm comfortable opening the next one. Yep. Anybody okay. else? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reedy. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to open the hearing uh, for uh, Nilkanth Associates LLP doing business as Country Crossroads, Six University Drive, Manager Ashgar Patel. Um, is there a motion to open the hearing? Thank you, Doug. Doug, you're muted. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, let's take a vote. Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The hearing is now open. And I see Mr. Evans, are you gonna be doing the presentation for this? Yes, I am. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I would like to share a screen if I could, please. Uh, can you do that, Steve? Yes, Mr. Evans, you should be able to, uh, you might have just had a little interruption there to rejoin, but you should be able to share your screen now. Is that going to work? Uh, you, you are muted now. It may have switched back when, when I did okay. that transition. Okay. Um, it would be at the bottom of the screen there in green. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Thank you. Um, should you be seeing me? Um, your camera appears to be off right now, so um, up oh. to you if you'd like to turn it on or leave it off, but we do well, not right now. Um, I would like to turn it on, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. Um, but let's see. Can you see my screen? I, I, I... Uh, we're not seeing your screen either. Or maybe uh, try now. I may have just had to change one more setting. Uh, start my video. Yeah, try it again. You just popped up as co-host. Okay, good, good, good. All right, there, there's me, and uh, here's my screen. There we go, we got the screen. Okay, you've got the public hearing Amherst board? Yep, we got yes. it. Okay, good, thank you very much. Well, I'm Dick Evans, I'm a lawyer in Northampton, and I'm pleased to represent the Nilkanth Associates, Inc., uh, who have applied for the, this license, and uh, they will be are applying for Six University Drive. The uh, uh, New Market Center. Um, it's a familiar space, uh, Six University Drive there, and, and you can see where the, the, the liquor store used to be, and uh, we'll be going into that space. Let me introduce uh, Nilkent Associates briefly, if I may. Um, it's been around since 2005. It was formed by, uh, created by Profil Patel, uh, who operated the South Amherst Liquor uh, Mart from, uh, for uh, 12 years. Uh, and, uh, and during those 12 years, he had no, uh, no violations whatsoever. Uh, he, he acquired uh, Country Crossroads in 2005. And uh, here's a picture of Country Crossroads. It's on Federal Street in Belchertown. And has, uh, it's registered with the Secretary of State in good standing. You can see that he's filed his 2020-23 annual report. And uh, he's, he's had uh, no alcohol violations for the entire 18 years that they've operated there. And that's confirmed by a letter from the Belchertown police uh, chief who uh, says he has no reason to believe that Neil Kant is not a suitable candidate for a package store in Amherst. Uh, he's on good credit terms with all his distributors. And we've got letters from two of them, uh, Martinetti, uh, as well as... Uh, uh, Kraft, Massachusetts, two of their distributors who have spoken favorably. The, these letters are kind of hard to read, so this is what they say. Uh, but they're, they say they've had no problems doing business with them. They pay their bills. Their credit is excellent, and they, they support uh, this uh, proposal, this application, and look forward to doing business with them in Amherst. Um, so uh, in addition to all those things, Nilkath understand and employs responsible business practices. That's one of the keys of their 
keys to their success in Belchertown. And I'd like to explain or describe at least what, what we consider or what my clients consider responsible business practices to be. So I know this is very important to, to Amherst. Um, obviously, they authenticate the IDs of anybody appearing under 30. Uh, there's going to be signage at the counter. You know, you must be born before this date in order to buy something. Uh, they will be very alert to second party transactions. And here are the, some of the signs of second party, party transactions. You know, when we see a young person uh, watching an older one buying a beverage, uh, money passing hands between two people. Uh, when a customer comes in with a list of things to buy and wanting separate receipts, well, that's a red flag that you've got to look very, very carefully. Uh, uh, or if a regular customer comes and buys something that's very unusual, that's another red flag. Um, patrons are constantly scrutinized for signs of intoxication. Uh, these are familiar signs, which uh, my clients are, 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 are very familiar with, of course, and, and uh, their, their employees are trained to watch for them closely. Uh, Maintaining a safe premise is an important thing. That means interior lighting is, is appropriate. The merchandise is, is not next to an exit. Uh, countertops clear of litter, aisles to be free of debris and litter. This, as for staffing, uh, all the staff will be thoroughly trained in responsible beverage sales, uh, including the laws and regulations. All of our employees will be TIPS certified. Uh, uh, the manager will, uh, be present during peak business hours, um, and uh, obviously zero tolerance for any alcohol or drug use on the staff on, on site by staff or patrons. Uh, we, we're asking all our employees to acknowledge their understanding of their responsibilities and duties uh, in writing. Uh, with regard to security, we locate the cash register where it's visible from outside, uh, from the sidewalk at least grant free access to law enforcement officers, of course, at, their, at all times. Hope we locate the, the uh, cashier so he has a full view of the store, maintain a list of emergency numbers, maintain fire extinguishers ready to, to be used, and a central alarm system, and of course, surveillance cameras. So those are the, the, the some or, or a lot of the, the uh, aspects of responsible business practices. Now, let me introduce uh, Oscar Patel, I would, I would give you a picture of him, but he's sitting behind me and I suppose you can't see him. But uh, 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 he was born in Northampton, lives with his family in Hadley. He's 29 years old. He graduated from Hopkins Academy in uh, Hadley in 2012, graduated in 2017 from UMass with a Bachelor of Science in Hospitality and Tourism Management with a specialty in Beverage Management. And I would suggest that perhaps he's the only one of the four applicants who has a degree in, uh, in beverage management. Uh, there's his diploma. Uh, um, he, he became a partner when he turned 21. He became a, um, a, a partner in uh, Nocanth with his dad in 2019. As, and as I said before, he is TIP certified and has been since 2016. Here's his certification card. Uh, now, as to the location, it's the New Market Center, which is very familiar, has a variety of different stores, and has a, a fair amount of foot traffic. Uh, I would suggest perhaps as much as the other one. Uh, the floor plan has been submitted. It's fairly routine or fairly ordinary for, for, um, for businesses like this. Here's some photographs of the inside it was, as it was left by uh, University Liquors when they moved out. There's ample space. Uh, in, in fact, there's between three and 4,000 square feet here, uh, about three fourths of which will be available to the, or accessible to the public, and about one fourth to the back room, the office and storage area. Uh, as for their product line, they will be offering a standard liquor store products um, as well as local craft beer and uh, soda, candy, chips, so forth, uh, as well as lottery, pretty routine there. They expect to be operating from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, Oscar will be on site uh, full time, six days a week, and his dad, Prof, will cover the seventh day. Uh, now, let me, I'd like to turn to the criteria that the board will utilize in, in, in making your decision. Uh, first, we look at the, at the, at the statute, uh, section 23 of chapter 138 
which says that the permits are enacted with a view to serving the public need in such a manner as to protect the public good. Uh, and as uh, your, your counsel stated, um, the Ballerin is the leading case in this field. And Ballerin has uh, said the test includes an assessment of public want and the appropriateness of a liquor license at this location. Uh, and in making its determination, uh, it's to consider the, these factors, traffic, noise, size, sort of operation, and the reputation of, of the applicant. Well, I don't think there are any issues here with regard to traffic or parking or noise. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite satisfactory as it is. And uh, it's the same, we're, we're suggesting, we're, we're proposing to install a liquor store where there's been one for a long time. Uh, so we're not really changing a whole lot. Now, what are Amherst's needs and what is the public good? That's not an easy question to answer and I've, I've tried to identify them. Um, there's several sources to determine what, what Amherst needs and wants are. One place is to take a look at the master plan, which came out in 2020, I believe. Amherst wants to ex uh, maintain its existing community character, focused development. This is a development in the usual sense where you're building new buildings, but we are, we are uh, occupying an already available space. Uh, the town is, has been quite outspoken in terms of, of uh, environmental and energy practices and conservation of energy. Um, in terms of economic development, the, the, the master plan, uh, their goal, one of, the, one of the goals of the master plan is to strengthen, diversify, and grow the employment opportunities in, in Amherst. We will be creating from five to eight new part-time jobs um, and may even have an internship program if you've worked there. Been preliminary discussions have been had. Uh, but if, if we uh, are awarded the license, then uh, Oscar expects to develop, or is, I wouldn't say expects, he, he hopes to and, is, and, and, and aspires to uh, develop an internship program with UMass Eisenberg from which he graduated. Uh, and this will be, uh, with these are the many aspects of uh, retail management that uh, an intern will be learning. Uh, it's quite a bit to to running a store like this more than I ever imagined, frankly. Um, in addition to employment opportunities, the town has declared that it's, it's, uh, it's promoting smart development. Well, again, this isn't development in the sense of new buildings, but I should submit to the board that uh, the smartest development is to fill empty vacant spaces uh, for several reasons. Was they're, they're really ugly. Uh, and uh, here's the, there's the Google Google Earth shot uh, or Google Street View rather of the of the store, and uh, this one's empty now, and, and it's got you know windows placarded with posters, which we're not going to do, um, and and uh, you know an empty uh, an empty storefront doesn't generate any foot traffic or other businesses, so we will be doing that now. Vacant storefronts is our problem in, in uh, Massachusetts, it's generally as well as in Northampton and Amherst. Uh, it's referred to as a scourge of, uh, store, uh, of, of empty storefronts. And uh, Massachusetts a couple of years ago developed a program to assist uh, communities with dealing with the uh, vacant storefronts. Uh, so certainly it's uh, the policy of Massachusetts to try to st uh, fill st uh, storefronts. And I think Amherst would, would uh, go along with that. Uh, so. What are Amherst's needs? Going back to this question of trying to identify Amherst's needs and the public good, there's another source. Amherst is a green community. It declares, it's very proud of declaring itself a green community. And uh, Nilcanth Neil is a green company. We'll be using LED lighting within an automatic power saving mode after seven. There'll be energy efficient coolers due to a new compression system that we'll, we'll be installing. The, uh, the store vehicle will be a hybrid vehicle. Uh, we will not be selling NIPS for several reasons, uh, uh, one of which is the reduction of litter. And uh, you know we see this everywhere and we don't want to be part of this. We want to be part of the solution. Uh, and also, th this is remarkable. And, and it's in their Belchertown store at Country Crossroads for the last three years, they've had a plastic recycling program where they invite their customers to return 
the uh, the plastic caps and and uh, ties and rings I think they call uh, on six packs or four packs in this case. And here's the ama amazing thing that in three years they've had five thousand of these come back. The customers have brought five thousand of these back and have recycled them. This is what we want to prevent when it, when uh, by by recycling. Um, Getting back to the question of identifying Amherst needs in the public good, uh, Amherst is a, is a DEI community and, and a welcoming community for, for uh, persons of all, all races and, and ethnicities. Uh, I think of the four applicants, uh, uh, Oscar, Oxer technically, but everybody calls him Oscar. Uh, he's the only one who is... Uh, coming in from outside. The other three are already located in, in, in Amherst. Uh, but most important, and, and I think this is probably Amherst's most urgent need, and that is the problem with, with uh, alcohol abuse at UMass, which we saw a couple of weeks ago, uh, 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 the, the so-called Barney, Barney blowout. Uh, we took a look at this and discovered something remarkable. This, this is a chart from a, a BU School of Public Health that just came out last year. This is a, a chart showing the entire population from age 12 to 20. Of those people, 76% did not drink. Of the remaining 24%, 63% report having binge drunk. And if you look at the entire population of adults, 12, 12 uh, teenagers and adults in, in Massachusetts, 41% don't drink at all. But of the 59% who do, 44% of them consider themselves binge drinking. So binge drinking is a serious problem. And Neil Kant wants to be part of the solution and not, of the, uh, not, not the problem. So in, for that reason, we uh, expect to institute a number of measures. Uh, we'll be using the ID science authentication terminal. It costs about $5,000. It's a fancy piece of equipment, but it's very reliable. You insert a, uh, an ID card in this thing and it will tell you if it's authentic or not. Uh, <laughs> on those days when, when events like Barney blow out are expected to happen, we propose to delay opening the store. Uh, and as I said, we'll require all employees to be TIPS certified. Uh, and we're not expecting to do much out of store advertising or sponsoring events or things like that. Um, and I wanna add that my, my client, Oscar and his dad, Profil, Oscar's gonna be the principal manager of the store. Um, he's willing to work with the town to help solve the, the, the serious problem that we've experienced recently. If, if you need somebody on a committee or something like that, he's, he's only 29 years old, he went to UMass he knows the scene there, he understands this. And uh, I think he could be very, very helpful to the town in hoping to mitigate or, or combat the serious uh, problem of alcohol abuse in town. Um, finally, I'll, I'll just conclude here. Uh, Nilkanth, I think you will find, uh, Madam Chairman, I think Nilkanth is deeply experienced, uh, we're talking 11 years in South Amherst and 18 years in uh, Belchertown with no violations whatsoever. Oscar Patel is as highly qualified as any applicant could be, uh, a Bachelor of Science degree in beverage management. Uh, he's, he's got all the credentials. He's got an absolute spotless record. It's a great location, a good location, a safe location, uh, and a familiar location, I, I must say. Uh, and, and he understands uh, what responsible business practices are and understands and, and hopes to help meet Amherst needs in that regard. And he's fully equipped to protect the public good with all of the measures I described here. And so getting back to the to criteria, this is where we started a bit ago. Um, it's the, the, the purpose of the licenses is to serve the public need to protect the common good. And uh, I believe that is exactly what we've demonstrated that, that uh, Nilkanth is prepared and equipped to do. Uh, so I thank you very much for your attention. We, we welcome any questions you have. Uh, and uh, that's a uh, thank you in uh, their native language, which is Gujarati. Gujarati. 
Uh, so thank you, and, and we, we invite any questions you have. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Evans. Are there any questions at this moment about this application? Anybody? Uh, Just, uh, one question. Yeah. Um, uh, I wonder if you could tell us how, uh, to be honest, I never went to that store before it closed, but for uh, customers familiar with that store, um, when they walk into the store in your vision, what would they notice different? Different than the, the former store? Exactly. Oh, probably not a lot. Let me ask Oscar. So we, we plan to renovate it. We do plan to add hardwood floors and uh, build custom racks, uh, wine racks. I, I've taken up uh, carpentry, uh, learned it on my own, and I've, I've built a few racks at, in Belchertown, and uh, we plan to do this a similar thing here, uh, build a nice custom rack, and I will also design it, uh, wood burning, engraved uh, vineyard on it, um, adding a little detail. But this uh, counter is going to be rearranged. We're going to move around some stuff so that the, um, that the store is more presentable and that the store is uh, noticeably different, that new management is in this location. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, any other questions at this moment for this application? Anyone? Um, no, um, if not, thank you again, Mr. Evans. Um, why don't we go on to the next one? And this is now we're opening a hearing for a change of off-premises liquor license category application. Um, is there a motion? to open the hearing for Simra LLC doing business as Amherst Market, 259 Triangle Street, manager Atif Tazneem. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Doug? Aye. Hallie? Oh, you're aye. Muted. Aye. Sorry. aye. Uh, Dylan, thanks. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The hearing is now open. And is there someone here to do the presentation? Attorney Bascom, you should now be able to talk. Is there anybody else you'd like to bring in to uh, assist with the presentation? Yes, uh, the manager, uh, Atif Tazneem. Is he also on? Yeah, he, I just added him, Atif. All right. Okay. Are you All right, to talk? Mr. Bascom and Mr. Tasneem, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so who uh, is doing the, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead, Steve. Mr. Tasneem, are you able to speak? We're not, we haven't been able to hear you yet. Okay, Hi, good evening, everybody. My name oh, is Yes. Good evening, thank you for coming. Um, All right, so you can proceed with your presentation. Yes, my attorney. Yes, yeah, so let me start off and then uh, okay. we'll have, uh, Mr. Tasneem fill in uh, at his comments. Uh, good afternoon, my name is attorney Gregory Bascom and I represent uh, Amherst Market. <clears throat> and I'm here today with the uh, manager of the market, uh, Atif Tasneem. The Amherst Market has submitted an application for change of license category from wine and malt to all alcohol, which is uh, distilled spirits. The uh, market is located at 259 Triangle Street. Within this district, uh, there are homes, both single family homes, large mixed use apartment buildings, as well as stores and offices. Oh, okay. Uh, traffic uh, in this area is both by feed and vehicle by foot and vehicle. Uh, it is light to moderate, except for peak business hours. And when there is uh, events and occurrences in the town and at the university. Uh, I wanted to go through a couple of the review requirements uh, by first explaining what the uh, operation of the store is. As I mentioned, the store is operating as a convenience store on Triangle Street. Uh, it's just before the roundabout between Triangle and the Pleasant Streets. Uh, it's located at the north end of uh, the town in the, excuse me, in the downtown business district. Uh, 
It is a mixed use area and the largest residential business combination district in the town. Uh, the market is staffed by uh, a minimum of two, two sales clerk at each shift. And uh, the management uh, stresses, uh, one of the things that they stress here is to have a well-trained uh, staff. And I'll get into that in, in a moment. As a convenience store, the market that carries uh, eggs, milk, uh, bacon, and various juices and drinks, traditional uh, convenience stores. There's a hard bar for hard beverages and microwave food. There are sandwiches and a variety of lunch foods. And the shelves are start with canned and, <clears throat> and snack food, pet food, and many household products. The market also car carries an assortment of specialty foods, uh, Indian food, as well as wine and malt. Two, the number of existing off-premises liquor license. Amherst Market currently holds the only off-premises uh, wine and malt license in the downtown Amherst business district. And if granted, it will be the only downtown convenience store with an off-premise all alcohol license. Now is the uh, premises, uh, with, with, with a uh, liquor license at 259 uh, Triangle Street appropriate for this area. As stated before, as I stated before, uh, 259 Triangle is located in a mixed use neighborhood, okay, that has both residents and businesses. Within walking distance uh, of the market, there are restaurants, pizzerias, bakeries, banks, uh, coffee shops, pharmacy, uh, laundromat, clothing stores, a theater, um, and there are other businesses, medical offices, the professional offices, and uh, it is also uh, just a short distance from UMass to uh, the north and across town, uh, Amherst College to the south. The location of the Amherst Market is compatible with uh, local churches and schools and the establishment and location has never been found detrimental to the educational or spiritual activities of those institutions. Fourth, the view of the uh, excuse me, view of Amherst inhabitants and assessment of public wants. The market is in a convenient location with plenty of parking uh, spaces for customers that have driven to the market. Uh, patrons stop in, they pick up food and other items including beer and, excuse me, wine and beer, beer. and after visiting other uh, businesses such as uh, the bank next door or the pizzeria or the, the medical office. The character of the neighborhood is conducive to foot traffic. Many of the residents' uh, needs can be met by local businesses without the use of personal motor vehicles. Many consider Amherst Market their neighborhood market. Many of them, Marcus Patron has provided statements uh, which you have in support um, of their application and their wish that the Amherst markets carry the still spirits. Uh, Amherst Market has worked very hard to maintain its reputation as a friendly, inviting store that is responsive to their patrons and has helpful and well-trained staff. Uh, the staff continues and uh, Mr. Tasman will, will speak to this. Uh, continue is, are continually uh, upgraded and trained um, in, in both customer service and uh, security in terms of uh, items, products such as uh, alcohol or tobacco. The market also supports activity in the local community and neighborhood. It is a, indeed a, a, a neighborhood market. They make the effort, extra effort to talk to customers to improve their services. Now, the other uh, factors supporting licensing of uh, Amherst Market includes uh, the noise level of the market is compatible to the surrounding neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> there are the typical sounds and noises from the neighborhood, such as uh, business and domestic vehicles, uh, site construction, business patrons, public gatherings, residential activities, and of course, the university related activity, typical activities and special communities activities, especially at Kendrick uh, Park. 
Amherst uh, Market has had a off-premise uh, wine and malt license uh, at this location, 259 uh, Triumph Street, for almost three years. And there have been no problems, uh, no violation, and they have not heard of any uh, service-related complaints uh, from their customers. The management stresses safety and security around the storage and sale of alcohol and tobacco and similar products, which includes uh, limiting access, aid identification checks, and uh, limited camera surveillance uh, uh, around those areas, sales areas. Uh, the management attributes the success uh, to a well-trained uh, staff, uh, the store clerks, and the uh, store security measures. In the past 20 years, Atif Tazneem, as the manager of Amherst Market, has held uh, alcohol licenses in his stores in other municipalities, such as Sunderland and Northampton. Uh, he has held these uh, licenses without any licensing complaints or any violations. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Tazneem, do you have uh, comments to add? Do you have a short statement? If you give me permission, can I talk? Of course, you have. Yes, please. Please do. <clears throat> my name is Atif Tasneem, and I live in Northampton. And uh, my family in this business is still started in 96. We have a store in Northampton, and uh, I still own a couple stores in Sunderland, Massachusetts. I have a dear beer wine license, it's been more than 20 years, but we never have any problem there. And we used to have a two store in Northampton and we have a beer and wine there too, but we never have any problem there too. And my employees are well trained. And I, I told always my employees to check ID, everyone who buy the beer and wine, cigarette, tobacco, anything. And uh, I already have a smart kit, the ID scanner on my store is already there, you know. And we are very careful to check everything, you know. And we have cameras in the store inside and outside. And we are watch our customer very carefully. If there is any problem, my employees train to check camera right away. They have access to the camera. They can check right away if something happened or somebody tried to steal or something like that. We protect very good there, you know. And that's all I'd like to say. Please. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions currently for either Mr. Bascom or Mr. Tasneem? Uh, Dylan. Uh, yeah, my question is, I know um, in there now you've got that kind of cooler for uh, beer and then you got that little section for wine. And what are you expecting the layout of the store to look like if you were to receive this license? Kind of what uh, section of the store would be dedicated to? Uh, uh, beer, wine, and uh, alcohol. We have a, the when we enter our store, the way the we have the register. The left side hole is uh, we we are trying to do the food last couple of years, but uh, with the cover, you know, the supply of the food and some of the stuff, you know, we didn't start a food there. Uh, we have plenty of this room here. We can make a hole. This side is for the full liquor, you know, if we got a license. And we get a lot of customers every, especially Friday, Friday, Thursday, Saturday. They come, they are asking for full liquor stuff, you know, but we say no. And because there is one liquor lessons in the downtown, in the south side, but north side people, we don't, near our store, we don't have any liquor lessons. And a lot of apartments building and neighbors around us, you know, and a lot of people don't have a car to go to the big Y plaza or go to, other far away, you know. And uh, I talked to a lot of people, they was very happy. They say, we'd be happy if you guys have everything here, then we have to stop by one place. And we used to have a one next door, our was, was cousin market and the north side, you know, and the cousin market is no more there too. And that's where people say, if you got lessons, you will replace for there, you know. And we have a lot of tourists come there. They don't know where to go. They don't, they mostly know only the downtown area, you know. And that's where they come over there in our store and they ask us, uh, we said we don't have a full liquor, you know, and we have a lot of parking on our both sides, back and the front, you know, and I think so the certain market is reserved for this license. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm just Marcus. If, if I may add, yes. uh, one of the uh, 
I, I think advantages of this location is that uh, Amber's Market is in uh, proximity of a number of large construction or, or, or just completed construction of uh, apart mixed use, but it's, it's a large apartment uh, buildings. Uh, plus, uh, it is a very dense residential area all around uh, the market. And that's why the market has uh, probably more foot traffic than people driving in, but there's plenty of parking, uh, if you know the location around the market. Uh, but they do do a, a lot of business with the, the neighborhood. Um, and, and I think that's one of the advantages, and that's why a lot of folks uh, who go there, uh, who are we call patrons, go there, uh, is because they're in the neighborhood. Uh, they have a well-trained, courteous, uh, helpful uh, sales clerks and uh, uh, a well-stocked uh, convenience store to go along with uh, uh, their current uh, wine and malt license. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bastin. Are there any other questions uh, for this licensed applicant currently? If not, let's open the last one. Um, okay, and this is, is there a motion to open the hearing for Mulva LLC, doing business as Cushman Market, 491 Pine Street, manager Peter Sylvan. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Um, again, thank you, Mr. Baskin and Mr. Tesney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you is, there, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Doug? Aye. Hallie? Oh, Hallie? Aye. Oh, Sorry. Thank you. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The hearing for um, Malva LLC is now open. All right, I'm seeing a um, Phil Hartman raising his hand. Okay. Uh, Phil, will you be presenting this application? Uh, Phil, you should be able to speak, but you'll have to unmute. Okay, sorry about that. Um, this is Pete Sylvan speaking. I just happen to be using a friend's iPad. I'm, I'm out of town. <laughs> So, um, first, I want to thank the board for the opportunity to speak. I'm speaking on my own behalf. I am the owner and manager of Cushman Market and have been such for the past 17 years. Um, for those of you who may or may not be familiar with the market, it's a, a, a market and a cafe. Um, and the market uh, has a variety of um, food offerings from frozen foods, chicken, fish, that kind of thing, milk on, you know, milk, bacon, eggs, bread, fresh baked bread, that kind of thing. So it's, it's an, it's an active, um, it's an active grocery market as well as a cafe in the back. And we also have sell and have sold beer and wine the entire time. So, you know, I, I think in general, I just want to say that, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I'm going to speak briefly about a couple of things that I feel might distinguish Cushman from the other applicants. I think in general, and from listening just now, all the applicants sound like very acceptable, good applicants for a liquor license. They all offer a lot of similarities as we do good parking. We have ample parking. It's never been a problem. We've been operating without incident for 17 years. We have a friendly staff. We're gonna use the same science technology ID for checking identifications. So I think there's a lot of similarities there amongst the applicants. I feel that the one or two things that we can offer that might be of interest is number one, I feel like there's, because we are an active grocery store, it's kind of like a mini Whole Foods kind of store, but very mini, but it has a lot of a variety of offerings. And so I think that, um, you know, while people are buying their, you know, their bread and fish and eggs and other things that they do actually shop there, they can also buy um, wine, beer, or alcohol. And so there is some benefit, in my opinion, in terms of a limited carbon footprint. You don't have to drive to another store just to buy your liquor. It could be all in, all, all in one shopping. Um, in terms of, you know, we, we also, um, we do not sell cigarettes. We do not sell lottery tickets. We will not send, we will not sell nips. Our 
target market is, you know, maybe slightly niched in that regard, but we will have, um, I mean, I feel like Cousins is, uh, not Cousins, I'm sorry, Big Guy is nearby enough for college students, and that's really not our, our intention or our market. We'll be more focused on, you know, the basic um, well-type drinks as well as, you know, the basic, you know, uh, vodka drink, you know, a selection of that as well as um, more artisan type things. And my intention is to have uh, more of an interactive experience with the customers. We have already been in touch with the, one of the bartenders from the archives bar in town that does craft cocktails. So we, you know, the plan is to have some informational sessions with uh, him speaking about how to combine different kinds of alcohols to make craft cocktails and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, in terms of our business uh, as well, we have, um, we've also are, we're very focused on a green business. We, since I opened, we've composted all our food scraps from day one. We have timers on all our lights and LEDs, similar to the other places, which I assume we'll do as well. But we're, we, we, that's always been a focus of mine. My background originally is in natural sciences, environmental and natural sciences. Um, that's that's basically what I wanted to say. Um, I mean, in terms of locations, you'll I'm sure you have all the maps of where the other places are, where their needs are. I don't know that this is relevant or not for Amherst, but we do also serve Leverett and Shootsbury quite extensively. I know that they're not in Amherst, but we're all one world, and they've got to drive somewhere to get their alcohol, and we're we're the closest place for them as well. There's nothing in Leverett. There's nothing in Shootsbury. Uh, there's the co-op in Leverett, but that's beer and wine only. So. Um, that's essentially what I wanted to say. Um, you know, if you have any questions, we, I do plan on having extensive education with the staff in terms of explaining, you know, the, the nuanced differences between different types of alcohol, because there's, there's such a variety today in craft alcohols as well as, you know, craft wine and beer. Um, that's pretty much what I had on my list, I believe. Um, if you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Are sure. there any questions, uh, Gaston? Um, I, thank you so much, um, and thank you for running Cushman's. Um, I wonder how much shelf space you envision if if you um, if you had the license for liquor. Yeah. Well, actually, so the plan is to. I'm not sure if you're familiar. I actually had submitted a drawing a while back. I don't know if, that, if you received that with uh, Stephen McCarthy. So you might have seen that. But the plan is we have a. We have about, um, it's a pretty good wine section right now, shelving unit that's probably about six feet tall by 12, 15 feet wide. And so, you know, um, so that will be the alcohol section. And then we'll move the wine to some of the other interior shelves. We do some of the other things that we have, not so much in there, like, you know, we'll still want to be able to supply a variety of groceries. And we have a lot of gift items. We'll reduce the gift items somewhat. Alcohol will take a lot of place of that. And we'll reduce some of the food items just in terms of we don't need three types of ketchup. We'll have one type of ketchup, that kind of thing. So we'll have we'll just tighten things up a little bit in terms of in terms of that. That's the plan, and then and then see where see where it goes. Yeah, got it. Thank you. And I, I did find the drawing, which is helpful. Thank you so much. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Any other You're questions uh, for Mr. Sullivan about Cushman Market? No. Okay. So thank you very much, Mr. Sylvan, for the presentation. Uh, so we have, uh, we still have all the hearings open. And so do we want to talk about them and ask any of the questions of any of the applicants while they're here, while we have the hearing open? Do we want to? Uh, I guess I, I would ask the same question about shelving to Amherst Market, or I need to look at the um, drawing if if they if they sent one with that information, <laughs> Mr. Tasneem, you, you yes. want to answer that question? Yes. Oh, where's yeah? How about uh, with the shelving? So we have like a on our store left side, like whole all the way whole wall is empty. You know, I will say it's by like a, maybe I will say more than five hundred square feet. It's less than more, little less than half stories. We can make empty on the left side. You know. Because right now we have the, some freezer there and food stuff there, you know, and we can remove all this stuff and we can make it they're all shelving on the side of the wall. And this is very safe place next to the register. We can keep eyes on it. We can watch it, everything, you know. But this is like all the way and whole wall. We're going to do it. Yeah. 
And, and if I may have a, a follow up, uh, I guess several of the other applicants mentioned their policy on NIPs, and I wonder if, if you have thought about that. We would remove it from the store if they are doing some like a trash stuff, you know. But if we keep it, we're going to keep it behind the counter mostly. Mostly people keep it behind the counter, you know, to for safety for the people can kind of grab it, you know. Yeah. But uh, if our town say we, we will sell like a big bottle, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Thank you. And to add to that, if I may, the count is run to. Uh, the wall, which ha has a very large storage area. So for storage, storing, uh, whether it be beer, alcohol, or uh, spirits, uh, it would be right next to those counters and uh, secured behind uh, a locked area. Thank you. Was there another question, Hallie? I actually had listed on my questions about this application, just with the proximity to the park about the NIPs and if there was a way to prevent littering after hours and sort of, you know, would you, if it becomes a problem, would you yes, not we will. sell them? Yes. Yes, we agree with that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can I mention something? Yes, please. Even right now, if our store, we try to not, don't sell a single border. You know, we try to sell six pack, 12 pack, 30 pack, you know. And and that's why if you go in my store right now, you will see we don't sell even a single bottle. Like people grab one bottle, we don't sell mostly people, you know, because the people buy one bottle, sometimes they throw it on the side, you know, and we just sell six pack and 12 pack mostly you know, like that in the packing, you know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, are there any other questions for any of the other applicants while the hearing is open? Or... Dylan. Well, I guess I just had a question uh, for the board. Uh, do we want to uh, leave the hearings open and, and, and begin deliberation in case we have more questions or we want to close the hearing, begin deliberation? What's, uh, what's kind of the best way to move forward on that? I would just remind the board that um, yeah, once they do begin deliberations, it'd be good to um, to solicit any public comment on these applications as well. Oh, should we do that now? Yeah, why don't we do that now? Uh, is there any public comment on these applications? Thanks, Steve. So uh, if there is, please just um, raise your hand using Zoom. I believe you can find that at the bottom bar there. Um, if you're on the phone, you can press star nine to, uh, to um, raise your hand. So if, um, all right, we do have- um, Do we have one. any, I can't, I'm not, I'm not unable to see them for some reason, Steve. Mm -hmm. We do have one right now. Um, we can start with Mr. Hoare. Is there anybody else who would like to uh, comment? Please just raise your hand and we can come to you in turn. All right, Mr. Hoare, thank you. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much. I live at, no, on Cottage Street off of Triangle. I've lived here since 1992. And I remember the hearing when Amherst Market first wanted to spend, um, sell wine and beer. And there really hasn't been any problems since they started uh, uh, selling wine and beer. I will say that in the past, I spent a lot of time picking up nips in the, on the sidewalk in my lawn. We had a vodka bottle tossed through the, the front window of the house at one point. And uh, there's a lot of student rentals in the neighborhood. Uh, I would just as soon not see that continue. And I would like to see it certainly not escalate. I think some of the um, 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 applicants that you have heard today, particularly Cushman, which, which does not serve a student population, uh, has real benefits. And I think the liquor store down on University Drive, which is wants to open up again, is not in a residential area. It would be a great place for this license. I, I did not favor the uh, Triangle Street uh, selling beer and wine. And one of the concerns was that would then go to 
uh, distilled spirits. And here we are. So um, that's my personal concern. And I take you, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to say something. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is uh, there anyone else here for public comment on these applications? Steve, do you see anyone? I am seeing nobody. Uh, if you'd like to comment, please um, raise your hand now or forever hold your peace. No. I'm not seeing anybody in the audience. Mr. Evans is raising his hand. Okay. Mr. Evans, yes. There. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. I just wanted to remind the board. I think there were several letters uh, submitted directly to the board and submit in uh, support of Nilkant's uh, application. And I just wanted to remind the, the, the board to take a look at them, please, uh, before you make a decision. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Has anyone had a chance to look through those letters of support? Yes, okay. Yeah, there were uh, numerous letters of support for right. various applicants that came in. Um, some were included in the original packet and some didn't come in the supplemental packet today, but that should be all the communication the board's received. Okay, so is there any other, does anyone have any other questions? Do we want, there are a couple of ways we can proceed. We could um, close the hearing and deliberate afterwards. Is that correct? And then decide whether we want to award the license tonight if we want more time to think about it. What does, is that right, Mr. Riley? Uh, yes, I mean, it's it's really the board's discretionary call here. You may, you know, <laughs> perhaps if you deliberate now, you may realize that you're all sort of thinking the same, but you never know. So you could uh, really do it either way. Um, right. I, I would, I would recommend, though, if the board is, if the members are going to start discussing the applications and whether they think maybe one has more pluses than another. Um, I mean, typically you would close the public hearing before you do that. I, right. I, I don't, I, I don't think you want applicants kind of jumping in in the middle of your that kind of discussion. And usually you would close the hearing before you start that kind of uh, discussion. Okay. So once we close the hearing, we can't, there are no more questions from the applicants or to the applicants, is that correct? Right, you've, right. They've, you, you've received all the evidence, you know, they wanted to put in all the uh, exhibits and whatnot. So I think uh, I think the public hearing could be, uh, could be over at this point. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions or would like any other, any other information from our applicants? Hallie. I guess one last question for our last two businesses or for Triangle Street and or Amber's Market at Cushman, mm -hmm. that you are both kind of beloved neighborhood stores. What happens if your sales of alcohol kind of take over your profit? Would you see yourself expanding physically or reducing the other items in the store you have, or how would you handle those scenarios? Add them here. Yeah. Just trying to manage our screen. Hello. Uh, go ahead first. I'll talk after. Okay, go ahead. Okay, well, this is Pete from Cushman. Um, in response, um, I don't believe it's possible to expand without a lot of the store, the footprint, without a lot of work anyway, and then it, it appeals. And so that would not be my first um, way to expand sales. I think we would just, you know, basically we would reduce, uh, we have right now we have a pretty extensive gift section and that's kind of, um, yeah. So I, I think we would reduce that gift section significantly and just just move the uh, move into more um, alcohol sales in those areas. So I, I don't think we would expand the footprint. Although, Never, I would. I haven't looked into that, but I, I, you know, I, that's my gut feelings. That would be a, a pretty difficult process. So that would be the that would be the first the first go at it, and then who knows down the road, you know, if it's really taking off, I might might uh, entertain looking into what it would take to expand the footprint. Oh, thank you. Um, 
Okay, my name is Atif, and uh, if we go to this political lessons, we know we um, luckily we have, have a lot of still room in my store on the left side of the wall, all the way in. And we have we don't have to reduce anything. It's gonna bring more customer inside. It's gonna bring more sale inside to my store. <laughs> luckily, we have front for the full liquor license there. Yeah, and we don't have to reduce anything. Yeah, you don't have to. But if let's say in a couple a year or two, the balance of your business starts to shift, like the hard liquor alcohol becomes very popular, could you see yourself? Is that what you're asking, Hallie? Reducing some aspects of the business and focusing more on hard alcohol, where it turns into basically a more of a functioning, like a full, full fledged yeah. liquor store, right? If it becomes more profitable than, say, I, I like the combination for everything, you know, because I want to be customer coming to the store. They can buy milk, bread, eggs beer wine or alcohol or anything they need you know that's why i want to be make, bring like for for one stop one place for everything for everybody you know okay yeah. one of the excuse me yes uh, one of the additional things that uh mr tazin has, has talked to me about is expanding his specialty items uh that he's bringing in so uh the current plan is to expand the types of food and make it a little more international uh, rather than specialize in, uh, you know, uh, beer or spirits, uh, that's not the specialty. The, the, not intended to be the specialty for the store. Okay, uh, Gaston. Uh, I just wanted to invite um, the one eighty one University Drive applicant if, if is there something that you'd like to add in in light of the other considerations that have come up uh mr reedy yeah that, thanks a lot sure i'm 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 happy to do it thanks for the opportunity um <clears throat> excuse me so i think you know, i guess maybe employees we're gonna have seven to twelve employees i can go through the hours of operation there in the lease you know 9 a.m to 9 p.m i think based on what i'm the, the line of questioning that I'm hearing, it's, um, you know, as I said in the presentation, this is only a, a liquor store. And so there's no displacement of other products. There's no, you know, anybody that's coming into this store is coming in to buy alcohol. And, and the operators know that it's not children coming in for candy or soda or people coming in for bread um, or uh, milk. You know, it's it's a discrete use and um, in a in a modest space um, you know, with uh, sufficient oversight. So I think, you know, we'd rely on what we said originally, but I think it's it's worth mentioning. You know, we're not near a high school. We're not near a park. We're in a commercial um, plaza um, and we think it's it's ripe for success. You know, one of the other things for the town to think about is the tax revenue generated from sales tax from alcohol and you know you only have eight of these in town if you were to give it to somebody who has other offerings and they're only offering limited shelf space how much tax revenue is the town going to make off of one eighth of their liquor licenses that they have so you know the the, the use that we're proposing is just uh liquor obviously with uh, sufficient oversight um and so we you know it'll be safely operated but thanks for the opportunity. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, on that matter, should we invite any? Oh, uh, Dylan, did you have a question? I, I did. Um, this is going to be a question, I guess, for both uh, 181 and uh, Amherst Market is uh, what is um, policy on, on selling NIPs? Uh, I know I think Amherst Market said they, they want to, but are amenable to not. Um, but, uh, and then what, what is it for, for 181 as well? Yeah, if I'm, if I'm still on, I think what we would do is follow any uh, local or state regulations. So we would say we would offer them. My personal opinion is that there's probably going to come uh, a time not too far from now where there's going to be a regulation which says you cannot sell them. And then obviously we would, we would follow that. So, you know, we don't necessarily want to hamstring ourselves because we think we have uh, sufficient means and a good location, you know, to prevent that, uh, the, the litter, but I see what's coming down the pike. So, um, I think that's what we would say. 
and I like to mention, uh, but I'm very open for this one. If you guys like, I will stop selling, you know, and I will never bring a nips and small packing in my store, you know. I will well sell big bottles and uh, like full liquor, you know. And I'm very open, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Any other questions for any of our applicants? Does anyone else? And when any of the applicants have anything else to add before we close the hearing? If so, raise your hand and Steve can let you in to speak. Is there anyone, Steve? Nobody. Nobody? Okay, thanks. All right, All right, oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Who was that? Uh, that's uh, me. Yeah, but let me oh, see. I'm not getting my uh, box here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, Mr. Sullivan. Yes, oh, okay. please go ahead. All right, just as I, I was hesitant to throw this out, but just in terms of location, I'm I'm assuming and and kind of going back to my comment before about us all being connected in surrounding areas. The other uh, there there is a liquor forty fours, although not in Amherst, is in Hadley, and is in relatively close proximity to some of the other applicants. So I just wanted to make sure the board was aware of that as well in terms of plotting out liquor stores in the area, that okay. not just focusing on Amherst itself. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions? And no other testimony from anyone. This is your last call. Not okay. Ready to close the hearing? All four. Do we need to do it? Dylan's got his hand up. Oh, Dylan, sorry, go ahead, Dylan. I, I was just going to make the motion to close the uh, four public hearings. All right, thank you, Dylan. Is there a second? Ed, Doug, was, you're muted, but that's a second. I'll thank second you. That. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Anything else before we close it? Nope. Okay. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Gaston. Aye. Helly. Aye. Doug. Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The hearing for the four applications is now closed. All right, so I'd like to uh, move on to deliberation. So how do we want to, do you just want to start deliberating on this? Um, are we interested in thinking about it a little bit more or just jumping right in? Go ahead, Dylan. I mean, I'll 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 jump right in. I'll I'll kick us okay. off. Great. Um, I mean, my my biggest factor personally, I think, is is going to be um, it is location, and uh, I I will admit I I hadn't considered uh, Cushman's too much for location, but it is a good point about I think Leverett servicing that area as well. Because um, I also think Liquors Forty Four definitely services that area down by University Drive. But um, my initial point at this point in the discussion is, is I think Amherst Liquor, uh, Amherst Market, as well as the previous one at six University Drives were, were very suitable locations for where I think there was a need um, for this. I know uh, I've certainly experienced uh, that, that lack of the uh, liquor store over at six University Drive. Um, Anecdotally, I prior to to this license coming back to us, heard mention of of that being um, yeah an inconvenience of of it being lost in that location. So, looking at these applications, I, I think they all look good. I wish we had more <laughs> licenses, but for me, it's it's uh, location really is, and I, I'm currently leaning more towards uh, the six university and, and and Amherst market more than anything else right now. I'd like to hear from other people, kind of what your criteria is and what you're thinking about. All right, thanks, Dylan. Anyone else? Kelly? I mean, if you're asking what I'm thinking, I feel like there are two kind of issues. I mean, we want to support a all-encompassing all alcohol liquor store, or if we want a mom and pop that offers one-stop shopping. If you, in terms of, that's something for the board to debate in terms of location. I do feel with the new construction on university, that is a prime location. 
making it walkable and to serve that side of the community. Thanks, Holly. Um, anyone next? Anything, any immediate thoughts about it? Any preferences? I'm, I'm grateful for, um, for the four applicants. Um, and I agree that would be, um, I, I am, um, it's sad to, uh, to, to, to deny um, any of these applications. I'm, um, uh, I'm very impressed with the, uh, father son team over on, um, at the, you know, the lost location. At six university drive. Right. Yeah. No, that is nice. I, I do think they all have really great merits. Um, I like the kind of a variety of different business models here, especially with Cushman Market. Um, I do think that uh, there is a, the need over on, on University Drive seems to be a little more pressing, especially um, with the lost location. And um, that the, um, yes, anyone else? Doug, what do you think? I don't think you have new to add to, to what people have already said. So I think that, you know, we've got good applicants, which is encouraging. Um, right. And I think there are, you know, advantages and disadvantages to most of these. And I think that, um, you know, I have a, a couple that I'm leaning toward, but a couple, you know, but not wildly so. And no one specific that's sort of jumping out for me at the moment. Right. Um, I want to kind of personally kind of contemplate these a little bit more. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't want to string it along our four candidates either, but 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 at the same time, I think we want to be pretty deliberate in our choice. So um, I'm personally wanting a little more time to think through some of this. I think there are aspects of each of these that that have some merits and and have some consideration and and uh, things we want to think through. And and in some ways, I think I I kind of want to kind of drive the spaces again, uh, you know, and and think about the locations a little more deeply because I think that's a pretty critical component of our our decision making and and think about proximity of, of options for folks and 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 uh and environments around those those spaces so those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about at the moment and not decided yet at this moment moment time for sure okay great how is everyone else thinking that we'd like to take a little more time and if so how much time and what would our next step be uh, Mr. Riley, if we wanted, like, um, well, like the uh, next the next meeting on the or, uh, I think I mean I think that makes sense. I don't know how far off that is for you, but uh, mm -hmm. you know I, I think it'd be appropriate to just bring it back. The you know the, the hearings being closed. I, I would just state <clears throat> on the record, so to speak. That uh, yeah, I think it wouldn't be appropriate to accept any new, you know, letters, photographs, comments from residents, and that sort of thing. You know, I think the that part of the hearing is is over. It's really just for the board to talk about, you know, what you heard and and ultimately which one uh, you would support the most. Okay. So. I mean, you know, more time is attractive to postpone the decision, but I, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure that I, um, I'm, I, I think I, I don't need it necessarily. Okay. So if I, decided I really don't want to, I, I also want to be sympathetic to the applicants and I know that they're eager to have a decision made sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I got to join the dog pile, Doug. I'm sorry. I think I think we can probably get it done tonight. <laughs> yes, Doug. Oh, yeah, Doug, go ahead. It's, it's not that I can't make a decision. I was I was just saying I'd prefer to have more time. I'm not saying I I can make one. Um, so if, if if the board is of of an opinion that they're ready, I can um, weigh so in with my opinion on that. So okay. So, um, so and does anyone have anything else to say about any of this before we, yes, Dylan? I was just gonna say, I guess, uh, you know, right now for me, I, I'm, I'm leaning definitely more towards, I think six um, university, one, I think the location, two, I, I, I do like the appeal of a, a full 
uh, liquor store utilizing the full liquor license. Um, that's that's kind of where I stand now. If, if somebody's leaning in another direction, I, I'd like to hear it because it's it's not like I'm entirely sold on that. That's just where I, I feel right now. Um, anyone else? Has an I think, I, about I, think I, 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 um, I'm in line with with that and I um, I'm hearing, um, you know, it, it, motivation and inspiration and the, you know, uh, some vision for that. And I think there's a potential to have a, you know, a, a distinctive Amherst liquor store there um, uh, uh, based on the, the team. And uh, so I, um, I'm, you know, leaning in that direction. Okay. Anybody else? about any of them i i agree with the motivation and inspiration and proactively deciding not to sell the nips which we've had a litter problem with mm -hmm. i also really like the location next to the big y with the traffic light too for safety reasons but i think either one is very walkable mm -hmm. for the developments in town too okay well, if there's no further deliberation, is there a motion? So wait, what, what do we do at this point, Mr. Riley? So- uh, Yeah, I think, well, you, you obviously have the hard jobs now, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, you've got, you know, four, you've had four hearings and mm -hmm. one, one license. So, you know, the, the board needs to vote to you know, pick to pick one. And so that's why I said at the beginning, you know, you may have sort of a moving towards a consensus anyway, but, you know, at some point, I think you need a motion to award it to, uh, to approve it for, you know, one of these four and, uh, you know, take the vote and see what happens. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion? Doug? I will. Um, I move to uh, approve the license for Neil Camp. Uh, at Six University Drive. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The license is approved for uh, Neil Camp at Six University Drive. Okay, uh, and then to kind of complete the circle, um, you know, we uh, we need to send out four letters with a with a decision. Uh, so you have that one uh, done, but I, I think the board should take three separate votes to deny the other applications, and the reason being there's no license available for them. All right, and how would that motion look? Does that like what's the line? Is there a motion? Uh, oh, oh, Doug, do you know how to do that? Sorry, I, I can, but. It, should it be three separate motions, you think? Uh, I, I think so. You know, I, I think it'd be better if the decision said the board, you know, the, uh, you know the, the commission voted five to zero to deny your application for the reason being that uh, there was no, no additional license available for you. Okay, so I will move to uh, deny the application of NP Amherst based on the lack of an available license. Yeah. Thank you for the motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? No, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. That motion is approved. And number two? Uh, I'll move that uh, Amherst Market at 259 Triangle Street uh, be denied a license because of the unavailability, unavailability of a license. Thank you. Is there a second? I, if I made uh, the, the corporate name is Simra LLC for that one. I may just put that in the motion. Okay. Sorry. And Dylan, you had the second there? Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye. It is five to zero. The motion is approved. And the third one? 
and I would move to uh, deny the license for Mulva Inc. I think it's Mulva Inc. LLC, um, based on the fact that there's no license available. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Gaston? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Uh, Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. The motion is approved. Okay, so Steve, right. you're gonna need uh, four, four decision letters. There right. hasn't been enough fun yet this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you everybody. Um, and then yes, Doug, and then Hallie. I just say I, you know, I appreciate all four applicants, and, yes. and I felt that all of them had strong applications. It was, uh, you know, sort of picking your favorite child kind of situation. So I think right. it's difficult for us. And and although you know these are unanimous votes, it's it's not a, a reflection on any of those candidates or their or their applications. They're all good candidates, and we appreciate them wanting to do business in Amherst. Yes, definitely. Second thank that you. sentiment. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Kelly, did you want to say pretty much what I was going to say? And just I also want to acknowledge the time and financial effort that went into all of these applications. So thank you all. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, well, great. So thank you, Mr. Riley. Okay, my pleasure. Right. Nice to see yeah. you all. Thank, thank you, nice Brian. To see I will you. be uh, in touch tomorrow about those letters. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. All right. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. And Mr. Evans is still on? I uh, don't believe I, since I made him a panelist, I don't believe I can remove him without kicking him oh, out of the entire okay. meeting. So, All um, right. Okay. Well, he gets to stick around for I, uh, our topics not... Um, I trust he will be respectful. Uh, topics not anticipated. He's raising his hand. <laughs> he is raising his hand. He is raising his hand. On behalf of my clients, I want to thank you very much and commend the, the, the board for excellent hearing and right. everything, especially Mr. McCarthy has been very helpful in coordinating things. I want to thank him as well. Thank right. you, Mr. Evans. Thank, thank you, Mr. Great. Evans. And thank you, Steve. Yes. Thank Thanks. A big job. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Right. And we, thank we're going to serve the Amherst community real well. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so topics not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Any, oh, I just had one uh, rental registration. Mandy Johanneke is, they are still not, they're delayed a little bit with talking about the bylaw. And so she's going to send me the most current draft of the rental registration laws, which I will send to Steve to send to all of you. And that's all I have. Is there anything else? Uh, no? Just an update. At, oh. Protocol is opening, the long awaited. Oh, great. One we gave up. And it looks like in the paper there's going to be a whiskey bar, the place, new construction on Spring Street. Steve, have we heard anything about that? I have not yet. So um, we will see what comes in. Great. I think even without these four, we've had our highest volume ever in the last month or two. So, yeah. Good yeah. to see you. Yeah, yeah it's good so, to see. Great. One of uh, one of my former co-workers from when I used to be a server up at Fitz Willie's is going to be bartending over at Protocol. So see, uh, see Sophia, tell her, uh, tell her I say hello. <laughs> All right. So our next meeting is, um, do we have a meeting on the 30th or are we just going right to April? Oh, work should go is April 6th. We do have a meeting on the 30th. I believe the spoke was continued until then. Oh, right. That's right. Um, I forgot about that. The new spoke. We will also have a change in manager for the old spoke. Um, so okay. there should be a, um, a media hearing as well. So also, um, did you ever follow up with the, I think it was Garcia's, the manager there left? No, let me make and a she, note to do that. Yeah. And so because <clears throat> they're supposed to let us know before they they change. Yes, I was uh, out of the office for a little while shortly right. after I came in, so I will circle back with uh, them. Okay, all right, great, thank you. So um, our next, April. as the next, we have April 6th, so we've got a meeting a week after that. Is that right? Because we're doing the first and the third Thursdays and then the 20th. Is that okay? The 20th is April vacation week. I don't know if anybody is. Or the, I'm gonna the 30th? Be oh, sorry? The 30th, you mean, not the, tw oh, the, sorry, the 20th of April, sorry. 
Right, right, yeah. Because we knew after the 30th, we go back to our regular schedule of the first and the third. And that's, everyone's all right with that. Or I, guess I don't can... have anything uh, scheduled for either April meeting yet. So if the board wanted to move them around. So um, do I we want to? We will be bumping up with ZBA, but um, especially oh, if we right. move back to 4.30 or if we have a short meeting, we should be able to accommodate both of those one night. Okay. Well, we could just, do we just want to leave it on the 6th? Is that cool? fine with everyone? Or no? No. Okay. All right. Well, let's just leave it on the 6th for the time being. So. All right, we'll see everyone here on the 30th at five. And is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Oh. <laughs> Who wants that one? <laughs> there you have it. All right, is there a second? Thank you. Um, we'll take a, a vote. Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. We're adjourned at 647. And thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you. Thank, Thank you all. And yeah, I uh, appreciate lot, your service with this. A lot more uh, uncomfortable than our usual business, but I think you all yeah. did a, a great job. So so thank you all for, for stepping up. Yep. Thank, thank you, you, Steve, for all the Thanks, work Steve. behind yeah. the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See everyone on the 30th. Take okay. care. Bye-bye.